And good evening and welcome to a WATD political forum. I'm your moderator, Christine James, joined by reporter Charles Mathewson and Monday Night Talk host Kevin Tachi asking questions. Tonight, the primary election race for the 11th Plymouth District, two Democrats, Rita Mendes and Shirley Azek, both vying to be on the ballot for the general election this fall. If you're not familiar with the district, it's a newly formed district. It's Brockton, Ward 1, Precinct A, Ward 2, Ward 3, Precincts A and B, and Ward 7. This was the seat formerly held by Claire Cronin, who's now the ambassador to Ireland. And we also have here uh, one of our media partners, and that's Brockton Cable Access. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Timing you all, Lenny Rowe and uh, Jill Johnston, timer and training with him as well. Now, the format is simple. If you're a regular listener to these political forums, we always use the same format. We ask the candidates to have prepared opening and closing statements ready, no longer than two minutes open, and one minute closing, please. Then we have a round of questions from the reporters and a lightning round, and you know this is our favorite. The answers are either yes or no in the lightning round or two sentences tops. And we stress that because nobody running for office can do that, but we still keep asking them. Also, please try and keep your answers to around a minute. If you consistently go over, ramble, or start to repeat yourself, then you get the bell. And as I explained earlier, we're tough about timing. We have the construction paper there. Green means go. Yellow means you've got 10 seconds. And red means stop, just like when you learned about the traffic signals. Now, we did choose opening and closing order out of the official WATD stand-in newsroom koozie, and we're going to start with uh, Rita Mendes, and then we're going to go to Shirley Asak, and we will reverse those uh, candidates' order at the end. So good evening again, and let's start now opening statements with Rita Mendes. Hello, thank you so much for having me here um, today. It's um, such an honor, so I am um, Rita Mendes, and I am a council at large in the city of Brockton and I'm running for the 11 Plymouth State Representative. I'm so excited about this opportunity to be running for this seat. I first ran for council at large in 2019. Um, 2020, I took office and three months later, we were hit with the pandemic. So my experience in public office has really been at the forefront, just helping the community because we all know how Brockton was in the red. We were really hit very hard by that pandemic. So I was there helping up uh, the elderly, trying to uh, give out food and, and assist the needs of the community. And we also brought you know, the vaccine bus when the vaccines became available and really working in that hard to reach population in the city of Brockton, speaking with the community in their language and really uh, educating them how important it was for them to be protected and to be vaccinated and providing all the uh came time when um, the community start calling you and uh, making requests of needs that we see in the city, whether it is um, child care, uh, parent, they just make just a little bit more that they can afford to uh, have the affordable child care and they, they have to have a mother at home and that really puts um, a strain in their family in order to be able to provide for the family because now only one of the parents you feel that you become a little bit powerless because you really need to be at the decision making. You have to be in a state house. You have to be where you can be advocating for your community for funding for the city. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. That was Rita Mendes for the opening statement. And now we're going to go to Shirley Asak. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, first of all, for, to WATD for hosting us this evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Shirley Azak, and I'm running to be your next state representative for the 11th Plymouth District. A little information about myself that many don't know is at the age of seven, I immigrated to the United States from Lebanon with my parents and my younger sister, Joyce Azak, who is current vice chair of the Brockton School Committee. When I arrived in the United States, I landed in the heart of Brockton. I lived with my aunt and her family on Belmont Avenue. I attended the Ellis Brett Franklin School, North Junior High, and graduated from Brockton High School's class of 1988. English is actually my third language. I'm fluent in um, English, French, and the Lebanese dialect of Arabic. 
When I first immigrated to the United States, I didn't speak a word of English as I started my education in Brockton schools. Great resources in the Brockton Public School District allowed me to become the woman I am today, and my appreciation for this guides my actions and my role as an elected official. I went on to obtain my undergraduate degree in Paris. After working in France for several years following graduation, I returned to Brockton to start my family. I raised my two daughters, Alexandra and Georgina, in the city. They attended Brockton Public Schools and are now in college at Boston College and Harvard. We have a great school system with great administrators, educators, and students. I'm vested in the city of Brockton. I have owned a small business, Posh Flowers, since 2005. And I know the struggles of being a small business owner. And I will continue to advocate for small business growth within our district at the state level. I've served as Brockton City Council for the past nine years. I've served as the City Council President in 2020 chair of the Ordinance Committee this year, and all the other subcommittees. I believe that experience is paramount to representation at the state level. Serving on the City Council for nine years, I deeply understand the issues we face as a city and have developed a strong listening ear. Mm -hmm. That's, I know, it's two minutes. Okay. It comes up quickly again. That was Shirley Azak with the opening statements. Remember, if you feel like you didn't get all your comments in, whether it's your opening statement or a question, you can always try to get that in for your closing statement. Well, let's start with questions. We'll begin with uh, Kevin Tachi, the host of Monday Night Talk here. Your questions for the candidates. All right, we'll start with the simple stuff, easy stuff. What would be, uh, so I would ask you, what specific experience or qualifications makes you the better candidate for state representative? We'll start with Shirley. What makes me the better candidate is um, not just my nine years experience on the city council, but I've actually worked on legislation, which are our city ordinances, which is how the city council is run. And um, I've actually worked on ordinances and worked on getting them passed with my colleagues, um, ones that I've worked on myself and ones that the community have felt that we've needed. So I believe I'm the only candidate that's worked on legislation. Okay. Same question to you, Rita. Yes, um, thank you for that great question. I am actively involved in my community in the city of Brockton, not just because I can speak the language, I can speak Portuguese, I can speak Spanish. I really connect with the community. I'm also an attorney, so I have the legal experience and the training and um, I can get the job done. People come to me with problems, with issues, and I only make when I can resolve other people's problems and issues. So I'm looking forward to see the challenges that we have in the city of Brockton and to get solutions and advocate to bring funding for my city. Okay. Charles Mathewson, questions for the candidates? Shirley, uh, comment allez-vous? Très bien, merci. Bien. Uh, bien. Um, we know that you went to the Sorbonne. We know that uh, you've been a five-term uh, counselor on the city council. I want to go back a few years and ask you about your years in the lit. My years at? In the village. Oh, in the village. Well, I grew up in the Lithuanian village, and um, so those were very tough years. At the I think not only the city of Brockton, but the country. In the late 80s, it was a very um, tough time, but it... You know, we grew up here, we stayed, we, we grew up in Brockton, stayed in Brockton, and um, the village was, when we when I lived there, the village was, everybody knew everybody. It was all Lithuanian and Polish um, of heritage. We had a Polish bakery, we had a little Zinkis Polish uh, convenience store, and even though we weren't Polish, we were, you know, um, we, we all our friends were of Polish or Lithuanian um, descent, so it was a really a great place to grow up. We used to hear St. Casimir's bells ringing. So those were the old days of Brockton, even though the country was, you know, the late 80s where the country went through a lot with gangs, but it was some of the best times that I lived in Brockton. It's very insulated in the, in the village, yes. Yes. Uh, Rita, como esta? Bien, y você? Bom. Bien, gracias. <laughs> uh, tell us about your youth on the east side. Yes. Um, so Brockton is really what has led for me to be what I am today. When I was in Brockton High School, I was 16 years old. My mom left me all alone here in this country. She went back to Brazil. 
I almost had to quit high school because I was working at Dunkin' Donuts, closing a store until 11 o'clock, getting home at midnight to be able to go back to school at 7 in the morning. But I had a guidance counselor that really kept me together and she said, you're going to go, you're going to be able to go to Massasoit, help me get scholarships. And I was able to continue, graduate from high school, finish my um, education at Massasoit, became a real estate, um, selling real estate, real estate agent. And then when the market crashed, I decided I had to go back to school. So that's when I went back to UMass Dartmouth and then law school and became an attorney. Thank you. Both. Any follow-ups? Thank you, Rosetta Stone. I won't, I won't, speak, <laughs> I won't speak in Arabic because you I haven't a clue. <laughs> okay, yeah. very good. Well, you've both mentioned that you seem like you're good at um, finding situations, finding problems or people that need help and solving them. Is there a specific incident that you can talk about, it's very specific, where you found something or someone who needed your help in your role as a city councilor? It, tell me a little bit about that. Let's start with Rita. Yes, and thank you so much for that question. We had something very recently where we just had um, some zoning changes in the city, and um, the C5 zoning changes was going to allow for senior housing and assisted senior living. And on the east side of the city, really needed that in a crystal lot. They were looking to really have more options to develop that lot. And then the west side have a project, a developer that is proposing uh, apartment houses that they really don't want it. So we were either going to kill that ordinance and not make it happen, but then the east side wasn't going to get developed or we had to find creative ways. So I proposed some amendments to that ordinance and now we have that fully passed ordinance where we allow it for the senior living, specifically for the east side, near the hospitals, near the college, but not to allow it on the west side that's where the people were prevented. So both sides went and it passed and we're all happy. Okay, same question, Shirley. Any specific incident you can tell us about? So I have nine years of specific incidences, but the first one, and that's one of the reasons why I'm running for state rep, is we're limited with how we can help a lot of our constituents at the city level. Um, so a lot of the issues become you know, more involved. So one of them is uh, senior housing. I have more complaints from our seniors that are, yeah, our senior housing is in really bad shape and our seniors need quality, um, quality living spaces. So I have worked with uh, many of our high rises that are directly in my ward, whether it's Bel Air Tower or Kennedy, um, which is a Kennedy Drive complex. They, I've worked with them, met with them with the housing authority, um, helped facilitate the process of getting grants to them to really um, bring better quality housing to, to our seniors in the city of Brockton. That's one of the reasons why I'm running, so we can help advocate for more funding for our seniors. Thank you. Just letting our listeners know you're listening to a WATD political forum. It's for primary election, and it's for state rep, the Democrats in the 11th Plymouth District. Go, let's go back to Kevin Township. Questions for the candidates. Well, as our region can, is, again, dealing with drought conditions, water is definitely a key commodity. Uh, what's the status of Aquaria as a dependable secondary water resource uh, as to, compared to Silver Lake? Uh We'll start with Shirley. So Aquaria comes up every election, has come up every election. If I had it my way, we, the city of Brockton would already own Aquaria because we pay approximately $6 million a year to Aquaria, and we're, it's a secondary source where I uh, believe we should be marketing uh, Aquaria. Um, where are we right now? Well, that's a really good question. So uh, I know. Just recently, we have our DPW commissioner that's, um, you know, we needed some water from Aquaria. Aquaria can't supply the whole city, so we would always need um, to have Silver Lake and Aquaria are two sources. But it's definitely an asset that the city of Brockton, um, I believe, should, should, own, should own Aquaria. So the city officials do decide that they want to uh, purchase Aquaria. Uh, what assistance would you actually offer city leaders in their efforts? So um, we've already been through this process a few times. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it, but um, I know my support. There is a handful of councils that supported that, but it also comes down to the mayor. The mayor is the administrator, um, you know, of the city. So it really we need the 
mayor's approval as well. So um, what assistance I could, I'm, besides my support and my vote and my advocacy to move forward in buying it, I'm, I mean, that's, that's the best that we could do. So you'd, you'd support a home rule petition and you'd actually help push that yes. forward with we, the oh, other? Oh, as, as a state representative, yes. 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 Okay. Because um, that's what would happen, seeing yes. that it's, it's located in Dighton. Same question, Rita. What, what's your understanding of the status of a quarry as a dependable secondary water source as opposed to your primary, which is Silver Lake? Yes. Um, we have to, the aquarium has been so costly for the city of Brockton. We just pay in, pay in, pay in every year, millions of dollars, and we're not really getting just a huge issue, a bad contract. So yes, either uh, purchasing the aquarium or going back to the state and figuring out whether we really need to have that secondary source of uh, water. If uh, we're required, but if we purchase it, then we're in the water businesses, then we need to make money with that and also sell waters to the neighboring towns. So that really needs to go back to the city council. We have um, a lot of councilors there that are completely against purchasing the query and others that are completely in favor. If it comes to a decision that we're buying it, then yes, definitely do a home rule petition and assist the city in that way. But but it is risky either way. It, it's it's a huge issue that query. Is there any other assistance that you would offer as a state rep uh, to help city officials if in fact they wanted to purchase this? So uh, the home rule petition would definitely be a way, but also to really go back to the state's requirement and figure out when we went into this agreement and contract if there's any way that we can relieve ourselves from having to be required to have the secondary water source because that way we wouldn't have to spend all this money on aquaria and try to maintenance. It's in very bad condition, bad shape. It would cost the city a lot of money. Charles Matthewson, questions for the candidates. To follow up on that, you likely came through some Silver Lake towns to get here from Brockton. Uh, former State Rep Tom Coulter, also a former Brocktonian, by the way, uh, restarted the uh, pithily titled Central Plymouth County Water District Commission, say that fast, uh, to manage Brockton's water resources. That's part of the reason why you rely on a secondary source of water in Brockton. Now, uh, Rep. Josh Cutler, a former ATD intern, by the way, uh, has taken up the cause of the Silver Lake towns. So as a state rep, how would you work with Josh Cutler and uh, probably Sue Moran and, and uh, others to um, resolve what is a century-old dispute between Brockton and the Silver Lake towns. Let's start with Rita for a change. Yes. Um, so the issue is regarding um, obtaining the, the silver, getting the water from the Silver Lake and the, the river is really low at this point and it's just been, Brockton's been um, getting, they're, they're feeling like Brockton is getting a lot of water from it. So it, it all come into really uh, assessing what the situation is. I would definitely have to sit down with them figure out what the issue is and how we can best come to a consensus that we have to come into an agreement. It has to be, we're not going to get 100% what we need, what we want, but we need to find a better solution for both sides and both ends. So it's not going to be an easy solution, but I am willing to really work with other leaders and officials and representatives to address the issues and make sure that the city is properly um, taken care of regarding the water issues and there. But that would be something to look for, don't you? Surely, uh, the towns own the ponds, but the city owns the water. Um, what would you do as a rep to help rectify that? I wish I had the magic answer. And I this I'm very familiar with this um, situation. I haven't been as involved as um, we do have a representative uh, from the city of Brockton that serves at, on the committee, I believe, with some of the representatives. I know our Senator Michael Brady has attended the meetings. Um, you know, I, I, what I can offer is opening up lines of communication, bringing more awareness, and bringing the parties together that would 
you know, hopefully benefit both the towns and the city. It's it's not an easy situation. I know. Um, I wish it was easier, but I, I think I my role in this would be that to be able to work together with the with the existing um, representatives that are working on this and try to find a solution that would that would work for both the city and the towns because Brockton is the only city in Plymouth County. Yes, it is. Uh, I remember, I'm sure you do also, when we had a forum in the city of Brockton at Massasoit, uh, Bill Carpenter was running for mayor. Yes. So it wasn't yesterday. And I asked this question of the two candidates, and we just about needed a police escort out of the uh, auditorium to the cars to get back. Uh, it's, a, it's difficult for you because you're running in the heart of Brockton to represent Brockton, but at the same time, the, uh, the towns, that they consider they're, you're stealing their water. Um, Oh, I don't know. I guess I don't have another question. Sorry. You're just rambling then? Yeah, just rambling. Okay, I'm just going to jump in. But then. in English, to regular babbling. Thank you. Book. Very. <laughs> Bada bing. Very nice, Mr. Tachi. Uh, I've asked this to all the candidates just so we can get an idea where you stand politically. What this is, a, of course, a Democratic primary. What type of Democrat are you? How do you describe yourself? Moderate, progressive, liberal, far left, Shirley? I'm a, I consider, I'm a lifelong Democrat, and um, I would consider myself probably a moderate, I like to say Kennedy Democrat. I mean, I've, I'm proud to be a Democrat, but um, moderate. Okay. Same question, Rita. What, how would you describe yourself politically? The common sense Democrat. Is it? <laughs> so I really, I look at the issues and I analyze it and make a determination. But I also feel that the Democratic Party is really the helping party. We're there to assist our community, to assist the people, to assist those who are in need. So I, whatever labels people want to put it, that's fine as long as it is for really uh, for the community, for the people, finding out what the needs are and ways to solve issues and problems and really assist in one another, because I think that's what the party stands for. What about, what do, you, do you describe yourself? Are you a moderate? Are you far left? Are you liberal? Are you progressive? If you had to pick one of those titles, what would you say? On social issues, I'm more on the progressive side. OK. Let's go to uh, Kevin Tachi. Questions for the candidates. Brockton has had its share of troublesome projects. Let's see, we take down the list here. Uh, the trash transfer station on the Avon line, uh, the gas-fired power plant, or the proposed casino at the fairgrounds. The latest project, drum roll please, uh, is the sports complex at Remova Park, which seems to be more of a gravel pit. What are your thoughts regarding this project, and what can you do as a state rep to help your district with issues such as this? We'll go with Rita again. Start. Um, the sports complex, I would say that uh, Representative Michelle Dubois, she is doing a phenomenal job. She's really fighting for um, the community and the people and the residents in the mm -hmm. area. I um, met with the residents. I took a tour. I actually went to the site. I spoke with the um, owner. The owner stated that all he's doing is cleaning up, removing the rocks, and, and getting it ready that the sports complex is coming. But then the community, the, the residents, they're impatient. All they see is um, dust in their cars, and they see pollution, and they see that it's something, and now the city has um, stopped them uh, from operating. And it seems like they're continuing. On a traffic committee, we have um, a very slow, like a, a small the street nearby complaining because now the trucks are using a residential streets to get to the site. It is an issue. Just a quick follow-up. But what, as a state representative, what would you what would you do? And, and I just use a removal park as, as an example. But if it's something that's in your district and you have an issue like that, what would you offer for assistance? You know, it's a... It's, you know, it's, uh, it's your district. How can you help city officials with an issue like that? 
I would be working together with Representative Michelle Dubois that specifically represents that area in order to be, because that's in uh, Michelle Dubois. She she's, has the jurisdiction, per se, in that area, working together, finding out what assistance she needs, and, and be um, doing that route. Okay. Same question. Thank you. So I've been there for the majority of those problem issues that you mentioned yep. earlier, but what I would do as a state representative is first of all, it's all about communication. It's all about, we're there to support the residents and the businesses. So I would like to find a common, uh, bring them together, figure out where the problem is, find out um, how we can resolve a problem that's similar to remove a park. The problem with remove a park is the, I was on the real estate committee, the city council real estate committee when um, they part the, own, the owner purchased that for a sports complex. So I would like to see a sports complex there. So there's something, there's miscommunication going on or something happened along the way. But as a state representative, I think my job would be to make sure that we have uh, laws that protect the residents, laws that protect business owners, that we're working together to make sure that, um, you know, it's everybody's livelihood, it's people's homes that we're uh, passing laws and working with uh, residents and businesses to be able to help them well, positive. Thank you. You're welcome. Charles oh, Matthewson. Oh, it's my turn. Uh, who influenced your political philosophy the most and how? Uh, Shirley. So my political philosophy, I have to say, um, it's constantly growing, so it's my community, it's my family. Um, my dad um, has passed on, but he was very political. Uh, growing up, you know, we were very aware of everything that was happening around us, and he was very involved in local politics. And I'm a big believer in all politics are local. It all starts here. These I, I stress that to my constituents. I, I stress that to my family, my kids. Uh, we need people to get involved with local politics because that's where we can make a difference and that's what this is all about, making a difference. Whether we help one person or one business or one organization, it's all about uh, working together uh, for public service for a better community. Yes. Thank you for that question. I never thought in my life that I would ever, ever run for any public office. I was always the quiet student, always just got straight A's in school, but hardly ever talked. And when I went to do an internship with attorney Jack Reardon, former Plymouth County Commissioner, he said, you really help the people, you help the clients, you really genuinely care, you'd be a great city councilor. And I looked at him and I just laughed. That would be an absurd. Why would you say that? And now look at me. i not only a city councilor, but now I'm actually running for um, state representative. And now I see the power that politics have in people's lives, especially when they don't have the knowledge to speak for themselves, when they don't really are aware of how much politics can influence their lives. Even their hairstyle, we have to have a, a law that says you can hear your style however you wish. That's how much it affects people's lives, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Any follow-ups? Uh, no, I think it's okay. Mr. Tachi's turn. No, it's no, Christine's No, it would be turn. my turn. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Oh, are you running this form? Yes, I am. Okay. Public transportation in Brockton, what needs to change? Let's start with you, Rita. Thank you so much for that question because um, there are people that I was trying to assist in order to be able to get them jobs, and I was able to get them jobs um, at a farm and local and eastern, but then the problem became that they did not have public transportation. The bat bus will not take it, the people outside of uh, Brockton. So we don't really have a reliable public transportation that those who don't have a car are able to get to and from work. Uh, on a regular basis. They would need to depend on rides or Uber and Lyft, uh, taxi if anybody takes taxi these days, but it's not something that people can really have that accessibility to get to and from work. So that really needs to be expanded to go to the local communities and surrounding towns. Same question, Shirley. What needs to change with 
public transportation in Brockton. So before we talk about change, we're going to talk about how public transportation is Brockton's uh, main, uh, th that's our biggest uh, quality, that we have the commuter rail, that um, we have three train stations that uh, in Brockton. As far as the BAT bus, it covers the majority of Brockton. Um, what needs to change is we need to get moving to get the South Coastal um, Rail, which has been talked about with Massasoit, and um, to get that moving. I know they talked about it 20 years ago. It's up there talking about it now. That'll help people from Brockton uh, or Fall River and New Bedford go back and forth, and Brockton will be the midway between Boston and um, Fall River and New Bedford. So we need to get moving with that. What needs to change? I mean, if there's a problem, I know that the BAT bus is everywhere, and um, if there's a... Um, there's a need for it to go to some of the uh, eastern, for example, as uh, Arita mentioned, um, then we, I would give a call to the uh, president of BAT and tell him, let's think about if there's a need for that, let's get a bus going to Easton. Thank you. You're listening to a WATD political forum, the 11th Plymouth District. We're going to stop for a few, a uh, little quick break right now. We'll be back in three minutes right here on 95.9 WATD. That's right. We are here in Studio B. We are at a political forum, the 11th Plymouth District. That is all in the city of Brockton. It's a newly formed district. Claire Cronin was the former state rep. She is now the ambassador to Ireland. It's Brockton, Ward 1, Precinct A, Ward 2, Ward 3, Precincts A and B, and Ward 7. I'm Christine James, your moderator, asking questions here. We've got Kevin Tachi, the host of Monday Night Talk, and Charles Mathewson from WATD, and the two candidates, of course, Shirley Azak and Rita Mendes. We were just going to questions before the break. Kevin Tachi, I believe it's your turn. Let's dig into the integrity of a candidate and the importance and the importance of that. Um, running and serving as an elected official uh, has its share of complicated matters and public issues. Each of you have uh, encountered issues uh, during your tenures, whether it was a personal business conducting sales with the city or confrontation with another city official that yielded varying accounts from witnesses. These occurred while serving in office. Now, how can you ensure voters uh, that you will be the type of state rep that learns from past mistakes and will do what's right while serving in the legislature? We'll start with Shirley. So as a state representative, I will do my best to um, to represent my constituents. And if, what happened in the past, we do learn from past mistakes, but also uh, make sure that we're very um, we're straightforward and that we make that our constituents know the whole story. Sometimes what you read in the headlines isn't always the whole story, but. Uh, okay. Yes. So it's, uh, and I know any constituent that calls me, I've always been uh, uh, present and be able to answer their questions for them. But at, moving forward, that obviously you, I wouldn't do anything that wouldn't even, that would even bring up an idea of, um, you know, no gray areas. Okay. Read the same question. Yes. Thank you for that question because I am a member of the Bar Board of, of uh, Attorneys, the OVC, the BBO, and that really checks on everything that you do. We have to self-report um, as an attorney. So anything that I do, I have, I know that I have my law license, which I'm probably going to be paying until whatever date, but that is something that it's always my fiduciary duty that I have as an attorney at all times. It's not just when I'm in a courtroom representing my clients, but also when I'm representing the community, when I'm speaking for the people. So I have that higher bar already that I have to reach and I have to ensure so people can know I will be accountable to them. If I do charity to the community, I will have this in my heart because it's my career, my profession is my license. Okay. Charles Matthewson. If you're successful uh, in the primary and in the fall, you would uh, either of you be a freshman legislature, what committee assignments would you prefer, Shirley? Obviously, and I've, um, uh, Committee of Ways and Means, but that's very, I, I, it's rare when they put a freshman on Ways and Means. So I'm looking more, I, I, uh, obviously, education, um, small, uh, small business, um, I'm sorry, business, and um, I know that there's housing, 
uh, economic development committees. So it would probably be economic development and, um, and housing. Rita? So I'm a member of the Massasoit Foundation Board, so I would be seeking uh, higher education. Uh, that would be something that I feel that I'll be able to really, um, I would love to enjoy and help out, especially assistance with uh, public higher education for the community and the people. Also, labor and workforce development. Really um, training, working with unions, providing grants for small businesses in order to train uh, their staff um, the staff shortage all around, we, we're really suffering with that. So that would be something that would definitely benefit the city of Brockton, create jobs, provide grants, provide training, staffing, the workforce, uh, labor and workforce development. The 11th Plymouth District is now described as a minority majority district. What does that mean to you as a state rep, Rita? It means that we are representing the city of Brockton, because we're obviously going to, anything that we do, it's going to better benefit the city as a whole, but we're also taking into account all voices, all people, whether they speak the language or they don't, whether they're involved in their democracy or not, whether they know what's going on in their city and in politics or not. And it's up to us elected officials to go and meet the people where they are. And if they are um, at a, a party, backyard party, then being at that backyard party and socializing with them, letting them know the grants, the benefits, the issues, what they could qualify for. It's really taking the state house to the people and all people, our issues are the same wherever culture we're from, but it's really speaking in their language in a way that they can feel comfortable to come to you when the issue arises. Question, Shirley. So I, you hear, I've heard that a lot throughout the years, but for me, minority majority is the whole city of Brockton. For as long as I remember, we're a minority majority city. But um, with, as far as this district goes, I am very excited about this district because it's all Brockton. Um, it doesn't have any other towns um, in it. And um, I, I'm looking to represent everybody. I think everybody, whether they're, you know, no matter what ethnicity, because what we're such a, Brockton is such a mixture of different uh, ethnicities and we're very diverse, we're a very diverse city. So I'm looking to represent everybody. I've never in my nine years had a language barrier with anybody that called me. Um, if they couldn't speak the language or if I, they couldn't understand me, I found a way to understand them and I took them, um, you know, I held their hand and went to City Hall and figured out where their problem was. So language is not a barrier. It won't be a barrier at the state level. Um, and we're, I'm looking to represent everybody um, in, in, in this minority majority of the district. Thank you. Let's go back to Kevin Chachi now. Questions for the candidates. What would be your first priority as a newly elected state representative to help your district and the city of Brockton? Shirley. So priorities, obviously, uh, education, education, education. Our, our schools are in um, dire need of um, their falling apart. Our, our high school is over 50 years old. And right before COVID hit, we were flying high. We were getting so much funding. We were going to, we were excited about so many things happening in the city of Brockton. And then we got COVID and everything took a huge turn. So I would like to advocate or look for funding to help our um, high school. We need to build, rebuild, or find, you know, um, we, we need a larger and a uh, a better high school. So that's, um, that's number one. We have a lot of older buildings, older schools that need to be renovated. And, um, you know, programs. I want to make sure that our kids have the best programs and we c continue to advocate for educational funding. Well, the Lord is built on a swamp. The high school is. So <laughs> it's, it's sinking by the day, supposedly. Same question, Rita. Um, <clears throat> what would be your first priority or priorities as a newly elected state representative to help your district and the city of Brockton. Yes, um, thank you for that. So absolutely education, but I'm also wanting to focus, focus in the trades. Plumbers, electricians, uh, carpenters. We have the um, Southeastern Vocational School, but that's becoming very competitive. So I really think our high school needs to implement that because a lot of um, 
our kids, maybe they don't want to go to a four-year school or maybe they want to go to a four-year school, but have a job where they can have competitive rates that they'll be able to compete in a job market. And being a, a real estate broker, sometimes we need an electrician. Good luck trying to find that. Or maybe we're looking for a plumber. There's a high need and we're not doing enough to train uh, our kids in order to be able to pick up. And it's a high paying jobs, union members, small businesses definitely need support uh, with grants and assistance and staff training uh, for small businesses as well. We hear um, about the needs of mental health services, uh, whether it's related to gun violence or the pandemic. Uh, the mental health system in Massachusetts is in shambles. Uh, Shirley, as a representative, what would you do to rebuild the mental health system? So I'm going to be honest, mental health system is broken, but our whole health care system is broken. I had, last week, I happened to be at the emergency room, and what a nightmare. And um, so as a state representative, I think we really have to look at this, um, work together with existing um, uh, state representatives, our Senate, really, and our governor, whoever the governor may be, to really, um, to really fix this. It's it's a major problem, and I don't think you know one person is going to be able to make that change. I'm a big believer in working together, whether it's on the city council or whether it what's going to be on, at the state level. But it's about working together, bringing ideas together, and actually passing laws that are going to work. So it's it's definitely a problem and it needs to be fixed and it should have been fixed yesterday. Rita Mendes, what would you do with mental health system? Mental health is something that really affects all of us, all of the families, people in general, just by being human beings. We are under so much pressure. We're living, uh, the pandemics just helped really uh, put a spotlight into that issue. So we definitely need uh, more people qualified to work in a mental health um, business counselors that can speak uh, the language. I think we need definitely need more people that can speak the language that knows cultural awareness so to be able to assist. And we also need to find a way to have uh, more beds available and have programs and assistance, but it's different. There's the mental health uh, that some has the op opioid abuse, that has some drug issues, and others that don't. We need to separate because those are two different distinct, so different programs for each, not put them together and just think they're part of one big issue, big problem, that we need to address it. Thank you. Over the past couple of years, there have been uh, questions and uh, fierce feelings one way or another about defending police, defunding police, change things, leave them the way they are. Where, what are your thoughts on law, law enforcement? Should we be defending the police? Should we be defunding police? Rita, what are your thoughts? Yeah, thank you for that question. I think um, we have to defend the public in a way the police is there to really protect to protect and we cannot just simply say we're defunding the police. I don't like that term, I don't like, I just think it's it's wrong. But we also need to be able to protect our residents, protect the public, and also keep uh, the police accountable. I think we all um, know what is currently going on in the city of Brockton. There has to be some accountability to the police department as well, but we need to keep the community safe. They need to feel comfortable they're gonna call the police and there's going to be police officers available. We cannot have people calling 911 and not having a police officer to go because we're defunding the police. That's not the right approach. But there has to be a balance in between keeping the public safe and also keeping the police department accountable. Okay. Thank you, Rita. Same question, Shirley. Thank you. Um, I don't believe in defunding the police. Uh, but I do believe in any agency that needs to have reform and to be accountable that I will work on um, whatever we need as far as legislation to make, um, to, make, to make them accountable. Thank you. Okay. Let's go on to Kevin Chalchi. Questions for the candidates. Okay. We'll start with, with Rita. Uh, there's some who marvel at your success 
winning an at-large seat and gaining a high voter turnout for two elections. However, some feel that you may be parlaying your success too soon as other newly elected city uh, officials have done unsuccessfully as of late. What do you say to those critics who say that you may be trying to run for a seat uh, too prematurely? Thank you so much for that question. I actually enjoyed the question. I um, always worked very hard and I love uh, democracy because the public, the people, they get to choose. So I make an effort, I knock on every single door, I talk to the people, even those that don't want to have anything to do with politics because they are tired of, of promises that have been broken. I want to hear and understand my community. And then whatever the end result is, my heart is... Um, is okay because I would not be able to sleep at night knowing that I could have done more for my city, but I just didn't do it because I was concerned of what other people's opinion about me were. If I had operated that way in my entire life, I would never become an attorney. I would never really be where I am today professionally. I don't need this for my profession. I'm really doing this for the community and I'm taking a pay card in order to represent my city and I'm proud of that. Surely. Uh, some say you're a slight favorite in this race because, race because of your time and energy spent on the city council. However, others question whether you've been more of a follower than a leader when it comes to the council. What do you say to those who question your leadership? They're wrong. Um, I don't follow anybody. I've never followed uh, anybody with a vote. I'm the first vote and have been for the past nine years, so there's no way that I've followed um, anybody. So um, I believe in my leadership. I proved it in 2020. I, I, I've actually led the city council back to normal meetings. It was a very tough, um, it was a tough year on the city council with the pa uh, pandemic and um, in the city in general. We were you know, we were out there helping. Uh, I was helping my constituents. We were getting food on their tables. We were help. I was helping the elderly. We were helping young families, students figure out, um, you know, uh, electronics to get to get st uh, studying. Um, I actually uh, was the first city council president to get um, all um, electronics to the full council so they can communicate via Zoom. Um, my leadership, as far as I'm concerned, isn't questionable. Thank you. Thank you. Charles Mathewson. Uh, happy Hour has, has come back as a <clears throat> subject. Uh, Rita, as state rep, would you vote in favor or against uh, the return of Happy Hour? That is... Um Tough question for me, not because the question itself is hard, but because I don't really drink, so it's not something that I sympathize with people about that. But um, looking into bringing uh, back the livelihood, like bringing businesses back to restaurants, bringing uh, opportunities and more people. We're having a the downtown area. We have Provo, which is really um, bringing the community and the surrounding towns to uh, the, the downtown areas in Brockton. We have the Brockton Beer, our first brewery there in the city of Brockton. So now that really for economic purposes, it makes sense if that's something. But now what would that be an equivalent to what would be the sales and promotions then we have to look into the specifics but i'd be open to the idea surely happy hour yes or no i didn't know it was gone so <laughs> 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 of course I, i'm not a drinker and i don't but um i think if that's what the re the constituency wants that that's what we'll bring back the legislature has been unable to agree on and put into motion a suspension of the gas tax. What are your thoughts on that? Let's start with you, Shirley. So I will support anything that's going to – we're in really rough times. Our, um, you know, the economy is tough. Pe families are struggling. Um, and – but, yeah, at the same time, I have – business owners that say they can't get anybody to work. So it's it's really, it's, it's tough times. But understanding it, I would be able, I would support anything that would help uh, families, help them save um, save money. And if that's a gas tax, I would, I would take a look at it. Okay. Same question, Rita. 
the um, gas tax um, break to it would really be benefiting more of the big businesses and what would the consumers really pay at the pump that's what we have to look for because we don't want to be given uh, that tax break to those that don't really need it and then the consumers still be paying somewhat maybe it's a little bit of reduced cost so I don't know if the tax break is really uh, the for the gas if really the way to go or maybe providing some incentive or rebate directly to the consumers if that's the desire. Um, so it, 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 I, I can see why they can't seem to agree because it's not an easy answer, an easy solution. Okay. Mr. Tachi? COVID has taken the public's attention away from the ongoing drug epidemic. What's the opioid situation like in your district? Is the state doing enough to make real progress with this problem? And what assistance do you think you can offer uh, with the situation if you are elected, Charlie? So I, I think um, COVID has made the, epide um, the opioid epidemic worse. I think it, a lot of people have found themselves found themselves in homelessness. Um, you know, it's it's grown with COVID. So as a um, state legislator, um, I would like to strengthen laws that would help first of all, help with housing, because housing, um, give it, finding and helping them with workforce and housing and really help take care of them instead of leaving them on our streets. And it affects the, the district. And I, I know this is the 11th Plymouth District, but it's Brockton as a whole because it's it's kind of grown out from the center route. So we it's a major issue. It affects our businesses. It affects the our our residents. So um, I would really work on legislation that would help help them with housing and workforce. Same question, Rita. The opi op opioid crisis is um, real. Every time when you're driving uh, downtown in the city of Brockton, you see more and more people uh, that are becoming homeless, and that's uh, due to mental health, due to uh, the opioid epidemic, and it has to be addressed right away because we're losing uh, people, we're losing uh, family members, we're losing people in our society, in our community, we're losing people that lost their wealth due to uh, the drug and uh, opioid epidemic. So it has to be uh, something that we need to uh, hold these companies accountable and uh, making sure that we're really addressing the core of the issue because otherwise it's just going to keep on getting worse. And we need to protect our kids. We need to protect our teens. We need to protect the most vulnerable due to this um, horrible, horrible. We're going to go right to our lightning round. These are the yes or no. Remember, lightning, yes or no is your answer, or one or two sentences tops. The reporter will decide. Charles Mathewson, lightning round question this for the candidates. This is an interesting district from Avon to Campello. What's your favorite spot in the district? Rita? Sunset Cafe. Okay. Shirley? Westgate Mall. Okay. Kevin Tachi. Would you be in favor of a permanent meals tax free week for restaurants? Yes or no? Shirley? Yes. Yes. Rita. Yes. Plymouth County government, stay or go? Rita? Ha! <laughs> stay. Okay. Shirley, stay. <laughs> okay. Charles? Uh, what are your news sources? Rita? Yeah, I read uh, The Enterprise, the uh, Boston Globe. Okay. WATD News. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you stop giggling and ask a question. That was a good answer. Uh, one word to describe your district. One word. Dynamic. Yeah. Shirley. Love. Okay. What did you hoard during the pandemic? What item? Shirley. What did I hoard? Um... Uh, it wasn't toilet paper because I shop at Costco. Okay, what was it? <laughs> um, I don't know if we, I, I don't think we hoarded anything. Okay, Rita, what did you hoard? Uh, I always, um, enjoy ice cream. Okay, there you go. All right, we're going to go to closing <laughs> statements. Now remember, one minute long, we're going to switch the order that we started with. So when we go to closing statements, one minute, we're going to start with Shirley, then go to Rita. Shirley? closing statement 
As your state representative, I will work tirelessly to ensure that Brockton receives the appropriate state resources to help fight for equitable funding in education, expand economic development, fight crime, and increase public safety. I will advocate for better services for our senior citizens and improve infrastructure. I aim to work with law enforcement, mental health professionals, and the medical community to address the opioid epidemic that remains a major issue in our city. I will work for the residents of the 11th Plymouth District to address issues that impact our quality of life and help us raise our families with pride in Brockton. I believe in Brockton. I've be, I have seen positive changes. It is through discussion and circulation of ideas, and most importantly, the unwavering conviction that there is hope for improvement, that positive change can be achieved. I have the time to dedicate to Brockton. I'm focused on Brockton. I need your support to continue to enact such change. Send your city council to work for you at Beacon Hill. I humbly ask for your vote on September 6th. Please vote Shirley Azak, and for more information, please visit my website, ShirleyAzak.com. Thank you, Shirley. Closing statement, Rita Mendes. Yes, I am Rita Mendes, and I am um, looking for your vote. I asked for your vote for the um, state representative. I received several endorsements from uh, different unions, SEIU 1199, the Nurses Association, AFL-CIO, Coalition of Social Justice, but none of these would matter unless I have the people, the residents. And I humbly ask for the residents, the people, the resident of the 11th Plymouth, to vote for Rita Mendes on September 6th. Early voting is already happening. Uh, vote by mail. Early voting is on um, August 27th. And I am here to really work for my community to be available, to be accessible, to be there when they need me in crisis, to call me on the weekends anytime. I am uh, taking a huge pay cut in my company in order to be taken on this endeavor. But I know that Brockton is worth it, and I'm ready to speak and fight for my city of Brockton. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. That was Rita Mendes. Remember, this is the 11th Plymouth District, a new district, and it is all in Brockton. And we're letting people know this uh, entire form will be up on our website. You can also watch it on Brockton Community Access. Thank you for joining us tonight. You'll hear selected cuts of this tomorrow morning during our Morning Drive news segment. Remember, too, check out WATD on primary election night, September 6th. We'll be on from 7 to 10 to bring you the results of all the races. We'll have our analysts on here. I want to thank everybody tonight, the candidates who so graciously joined us, Kevin Tachi, Charles Matthewson, our time reserver there, Lenny and Jill. We've got Larry, our engineer, and of course, thank you, Brockton. Mike. Mike, sorry. Hey, Mike. Mike sorry. Thanks, sir. He's blocking your head from community access. Remember, get out and vote. If you don't vote, you don't have a voice. I'm Christine James. Thanks for listening.